Randy gets an idea in his head after he sees a tape of somebody of, of the game plan on what he wants to do, how he wants to attack him, and then we just kind of work from there. I mean, his Greco-Roman wrestling, we ain't got to work on that. Randy's been doing that since he was eight. But, you know, the striking uh, is, is something that's fairly recent for him. And he gained more confidence in the Tim Sylvia fight with his stand-up. Now he knows he doesn't have to strike to set up his takedowns. He can strike the actual strike and, and take people out. The fact that he's, he's 44, which really plays no factor in, in the fight at all. <laughs> About 29 and he whips the shit out of me. We're really working on him getting fluid, using his dexterity of upper body, lower body, setting his boxing up, throw, going to kicks, and then back to boxing again. So he's doing great. I mean, as you can see with my two black eyes, and not too many people have been able to do that to me. So he's uh, he's doing just fine. Randy likes to work on a little bit of everything. So that's what we've done for this fight, taking into account that Gonzaga's a big, athletic young guy and he's hungry. Uh, we, we're accounting for all that as well. but. Uh, this is, I've been with Randy for two and a half years, and this is probably the best camp we've ever had, the best he's ever looked with the striking. Uh, with myself, Chris Ben, and Sean Tompkins, uh, I think people are gonna see a different Randy with his striking. Styles make fights. Right. That's the golden rule. If a guy's a great striker, you know, well, style dude, that's a good wrestler. Take away his tools, put them on his back. Right. Okay, then the opposite side, you know, is, is a great jiu-jitsu guy. He wants to be on his back so he can submit the rest. You know, you got all these different yeah, styles. Yeah. So you have to be well-rounded out of everything so you can find, this is my opponent's strengths, okay? So I need to match his strengths and learn how to exploit his weaknesses at the same time. I think we're gonna go out there and try and pick Gonzaga apart a little bit, punish him, test him, because I know he doesn't have the conditioning that Randy does, but I don't think he has the conditioning to be in a world title fight either. I think if I have an advantage, uh, it's the conditioning, mobility, you know, going out, pushing the tempo, making him work hard, keeping the pressure on him, and I, I think that attitude will pay dividends in the later rounds especially. Uh, it'll be a good fight. Uh, everyone asks, who do you get nervous? And right away implies something negative. I, I'm excited about what I do. I love my job, and so I'm never nervous. Everything gets pretty narrow. We, the crowd kind of drowns out. and You have a set in your mind what, what that first exchange is going to be like, and then from there it's, it's kind of a reaction to, to what happens. You make adjustments and, and go with, you know, with what you're trained to do. And, uh, you, you really, if you're in the right frame of mind, you're not thinking about too much. After a spectacular victory over Gabriel Gonzaga, Randy had little left to prove. He had returned to fight the number one fighter in the world, but due to contract disputes, Randy would have to honor his contract and wait one more year to fight Fedor. While it's uncertain whether this fight will ever take place, Randy has turned much of his attention to giving back. Of all the fans we have out there in MMA, the GIs, yeah. they, they understand. They, they have a combatives program. They're learning what the different positions are. They understand you know, the guard and, and a lot of the subtleties of our sport that, that a lot of the average people that are watching don't get. Warrior spirit is, is very rich in the military, and, and that's something that we share. We started a foundation this last year to raise some awareness and raise some funds, hopefully, to. Uh, to identify some guys that have needs that, that aren't being met that, that we can go on and, and hopefully support. It was only our second event and our record was 44,000 in the first event and we, we trashed that today so uh, we're really excited. This foundation kind of spawned out of first of all me being in the service in the army for six years back in the 80s and early 90s. Now 20 years later getting the chance to kind of tour the, with the guys over in Iraq and see the kinds of things that those guys are going through, putting their bodies on the line. 18, 19, 20 year old kids doing a marvelous job of representing us in, in some pretty tough times. Especially those guys that have kind of paid the ultimate price and lost limbs and been injured, been wounded. And they come back and now they have to find ways to reassimilate themselves into our society and, and support their family. I was there for 12 days. I think being in that situation and 
in uh, you know being apart for the longest we've been apart in two years you, you kind of realize some things and realize what's important and, and uh, we kind of mutually decided that uh, we should get married. We got married at Turtle Bay in the North Shore of Oahu and it went barefoot at sunset just like this on the beach. It was, it was perfect. Um, I, en I enjoy fatherhood. I enjoy my kids. I think uh, they've had a positive influence on me and, and I hope that I've had a positive influence on them. They're both the grown ones, a 23-year-old and a 25-year-old, they're both grown and, and have lives of their own and, and they're very, very good people. I'm very proud of them. My daughter's kind of the bohemian wild child and my son is the very soft-spoken intellectual side of me. The third one is a spitting, a, sp a spitting, <laughs> he's a spitting image. He's a little mini me. He, he uh, unfortunately even got my hairline, so. Uh, and he's, he's a great kid. He's a handful. He's gonna be, a, probably gonna be a fighter. Uh, I think parents are, as they become fans of the sport, are now starting to see that, you know, we're not thugs. This isn't just two guys bludgeoning each other. There's a lot of technique and, and a lot of discipline and a lot of sacrifices and, and a lot of very, very good things, character and, and all those things that come out of our sport. My daughter trained and it was the best thing for her at 14 and 15 years old. I never worried about her on her dates and, and she did kind of come out of her shell. It did a lot of really good things for her. And you know, my, my son wrestled all through school. The same thing, I think that those combative sports breed a particular mentality. They, breed of mindset and some character that you don't find in a lot of other places. Our kids program has really taken off at Extreme Couture and uh, they're learning wrestling, they're learning submission holds, they're learning proper punching and kicking and all those things that, that are indigenous to traditional martial arts but under the, the MMA you know, banner. As a champion and positive role model, Randy mentors up and coming fighters. I've known Randy about three years. Mm -hmm. I teach uh, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu and Muay Thai. Randy had asked Jay White to help him train for the Gonzaga fight. Uh, so how do you feel when you got that phone call? What was going on in your life at the time? Uh, nothing really. I kind of gave up fighting for a little while. I moved back to New York where I'm from and <clears throat> caught up in getting a normal job. And, but, normal job? Yeah. What? But, yeah, he called me and asked me, so I came out. Yeah. I was honored to. Yeah, it was a great opportunity. So you're, you have an upcoming fight? Yeah, December 15th. And I understand you're going to be asking Randy. <laughs> I'm going to ask him to corner me, yeah. After cornering Randy and watching him defeat Gabriel Gonzaga, Jay was inspired to return to fighting, to pursue his dream and follow in Randy's footsteps. My schedule doesn't always permit me to be in their corner all the time, so when I do get the opportunity, I want to take it. It's crazy, it's a dream come true. I mean, I remember watching them when I was a kid. And... Kind of become a constant juggling act to keep the businesses and all the things I have going on, and you know, the acting is another thing, and then training, keeping my body in shape. So, uh, you know, I, I look at it in a positive way. The time that I do spend away is time that my body's completely healing and recovering from, from the training process and uh, I think it just come back stronger. Well, I've been in six major motion pictures already. Th this will be probably the biggest role I've had uh, in the prequel to The Scorpion King. I'll get to play a bad guy. It's going to be fun. I got to do my first love scene and my first dying scene. It was good that Kim got cast in that love scene. It's PG-13, so it wasn't <laughs> too crazy, but uh, it was still a little weird kind of making out with your wife <laughs> with, with, like, with a whole set full of people and cameraman and, and the director kind of te te teaching, teaching her you. how to <laughs> caress the back of my head. And... I think the obvious, uh, you know, the, the more physical roles, you know, the, the bad guys and the bodyguards and the and the thug stuff I think I could do with my eyes closed. I don't yeah. think that that's difficult and I kind of want to challenge. I really want to do a Western, believe it or not. I don't know how far we can go with these knobby ears and this crooked nose, but... Uh... 
I'm having a lot of fun doing a lot of other stuff, the businesses and the acting and all that stuff, but I, my uh, first passion has always been competing and, and fighting, so I, I like that and want to keep doing that as long as I can. Without question, Randy epitomizes what a great MMA fighter is. Misunderstood early on as a brutal and barbaric sport, MMA fighters like Randy Couture have shown it to be a sport that requires a tremendous amount of skill and technique. But more than anything, it requires heart. In the fall of 2008, at the age of 45, Randy will finally get the chance to fight his most worthy opponent yet. Probably the number one fighter in the world right now is Fedor. I don't think anybody's going to argue with that. Whatever the outcome, Randy Couture has already earned his place in MMA history as both a legend and a gentleman. I'm Marika Taylor. You're watching Outside the Ring. You ready?